Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot and welcome to another mod with me. Today we're going to be trimming and edging my Isadora Tarot. So this is a deck that I um, recently just did an unboxing of and I happened to find it on makeplaincards.com. Um, and it's a deck that I've actually wanted for quite a while but I thought it was out of print and I just happened to stumble across it. And it is like this weird collage kind of pip style deck that um, has a definite, uh, like it says, neo-Victorian feel to it. Um, I love the color palette and all of that. But these white borders are just, to me, kind of take away from that vintage goodness of this deck. So, you know, I'm going to take them off because that's kind of what I do. Because you can see it here. Um, in the title card, like if it was, had been borderless, like look how gorgeous that looks. So I'm basically going to make it borderless myself. All of the titles are down here in these little um, textured areas with the numbers up top. So everything is contained within this inner border. So I think it should trim really well. I should just be able to crop the white off of all the sides and hopefully it should look great. Um, the back is, however, borderless, but I think that even when we take the um, borders off, I don't think I'm going to lose much in the way of uh, imagery. I'll just use a little bit, lose a little bit of the um, excess coloring on the top and bottom, so it should be fine. So anyway, this is a process that I'm really looking forward to doing because I do really like this deck and of course trimming it is going to make it a little bit smaller, which in my opinion is almost always a good thing. Um, I love a smaller deck. It's easier for me to work with, easier for me to shuffle. This does have the um, Make Playing Cards cardstock, so, uh, which I actually really nice. It's, it's durable, it's not super glossy, and it's um, a little bit on the thinner side, which I do actually really like. So let's go ahead and pop on over to my craft table and get started. Okay, so I've got all my favorite tools. I've got my deck, my favorite trimmer, and of course my favorite corner rounder, which we will use after I trim the cards all down. And um, I will be edging this deck, but I have um, some new markers that I thought we might maybe play with and check out and see how those will work. But first things first, we need to take off these white borders. So um, as I always do these days, make sure all my cards are facing the right way. It looks like for the most part they are. And um, I'm going to trim them one side at a time just so that I get that nice clean um, cut, that precision cutting that's as close to, I think, machine cutting that you can probably get um, by hand. So I have my trusty washi tape as well for my measurements and um, you know if you've watched any of my recent mods you know that this is kind of the same process that I do with every deck is I kind of bring it in here and it looks like I need to wipe my blade. Um, that is a good thing to always double check before you get started. So I'm not actually pressing my hand against the blade, I'm taking the paper towel holding it on either side and running it across the blade just to clean it off. This is a, a self-sharpening blade, but it does tend to get some of the fibers from the cards, particularly when you're trimming those, um, those linen cards, which is something that I recently did with this trimmer. It tends to get some of the fibers on there, so it's handy to clean it off every once in a while. So what I'm gonna start with is um, cutting off the right side of the entire deck, and I'm just gonna put it up here get it about where I want it. Um, and I tend to try and use the measurements on the board as close as I can because while I am using washi tape to help line things up, using the measurements does help keep things even more um, precise. So for these particular cards, I think what I wanna do is cut just to the inside of this black line. Um, I did think about trying to leave the black line and just cut to the right of it. But the problem with that is that Unless um, my corner rounder, and obviously this would be a small corner, this would probably be a medium one. Unless my corner rounder is exactly the same size, um, I'm gonna end up clipping off some of that black border anyway. The chances of that being an exact match are pretty slim. So I'm rather than try to fuss with that and try to get it just exact, I'm just gonna go to the inside of that black border 
That means that I will have one black line across the bottom on all the cards, but that really doesn't bother me. It'll be uniform on all the cards, so I think that'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is just slip this card in here, get it so that my guide is lined up just to the other side of that black line. And of course, it's not, it's just over the two and a half inch mark. So I think I'm going to go ahead and line it up with that two and a half inch mark so that I'm making sure that all my cards will be exactly two and a half inches when I cut it on the right. Obviously, that's going to get smaller when I take the other side off. Um, the washi here is just to help me line up and remember which line exactly that I'm working with. So I'm going to put that on there. Try to get that as lined up as best I can. And it's always a little bit um, of a futz around with it because these cards are a little bit slippery. And, you know, it's the has a plastic coating or plastic wrap over the top of it which you can see my washi pulls up i think i mentioned that in one of my other videos as well um that if you're not careful the washi will pull this plastic sheeting off over the top of it and i am going to before i make that first cut i am going to real quick um sort through the cards and make sure that i don't have any text that's sitting right up against that line i shouldn't um Hopefully the, the creator left enough space that there, that there is a nice um, border, but it's always good to check. And you can see here that the um, text is already being cut off on the bottom. So that white border is placed over the top of these images. So cutting into that really isn't going to change that because that's already the case for this deck. So I just am making sure that none of my titles are going to get trimmed off. Um, however, this this is a deck that you could probably read without the um, titles because it does have the numbers up top and the suits are very identifiable. It just might be your, um, your court cards that might give you pause in that case. And that definitely tends to be the case with most decks. See the hanged man here is pretty close, but it's not right up against that black line, so I should be fine. It's even closer here on the left hand side, so I'll have to be careful. We're really just looking for those really long titles just to make sure nothing is pressed up against that right side. And of course I'm also making sure that all my cards are faced the same way because part of what gets that nice trim is when you're doing things uniform like this that everything is always moving in the same direction, always being trimmed in the same direction. So that ensures that everything, that the right side of this deck is all going to be cut at exactly the same measurements. And um, that just helps keep that really uniform cut going. So I'm gonna line that up there, press down on my guide and make my first cut. And if you can see, either my card wasn't straight I think I say this all the time. I always blame the printer, but it's probably me. Um, I did get just a little bit of that black line, so I'm gonna scoot that in just a tad, and I'm gonna come just to the right of the two and a half inch mark now. And trim off that little excess which you can see here and that will get rid of the last of that black border for me now you can see these cards are going to get very long and skinny um, I'm okay with that but that is something to definitely keep in mind when you are trimming that you know it is going to change the perspective of your cards a little bit because you are changing um, the dimensions of it so again, I'm just making sure that I'm lining this up just to the right of that black line so that they are in the same position. And cutting, and this is a fairly thin, easy cardstock to get through, so i um, not having any trouble there. And you can see those two came out really great. And I'm gonna have a nice little deck when I'm done. Let's so go ahead and do one more. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the right side of the deck and we'll come and check back in when I'm done.
Okay, so I've got all the right sides cut off my deck. They are all right here, and we'll just scoot those out of the way. And you can see here when I flatten it down, I got a pretty straight cut that again is using those measurements, helps me to get those precision cuts on it. Um, you can see the deck is, is gonna be small, but I'm okay with that. So now what I'm gonna do is flip it around the other way because I always like to keep my cards going in the direction that I'm working. And I'm going to um, cut off the, well, what's now again the right side, but the other side of the deck. So I'm gonna slide it in here and I'm going to line that up with my trimmer. And I wanna get as close to, like I said, as close to a, an actual mark on my board as possible. I don't like to be in between the marks because then it makes things hard to line up. So it looks like if I go right about two and a quarter here, that's going to get me right about where I want to be. And I do try to make sure that my top and bottom is lined up and then I'm pressed up against the top and trim off that excess. And you can see here that obviously um, I either didn't trim straight or uh, the printing is, is not 100% straight. Um, and this is this happens every time. Every time I, I trim a deck, I have to make these minor adjustments in order to compensate for um, for those little issues that arise. So I'm trying to make sure that my card is lined up properly on the board here, and then hopefully I'll be able to um, trim that last little bit off. And there it went. So I just probably, cause here's the little bit, I can't even pick it up, it's so little. Here was that little bit. So I probably just didn't have it pressed straight up um, against the top. Um, so, you know, it's, it's slippery. So you have to kind of be careful in the slightest little twist of your finger, twist the card a little bit. And then those, that's what makes those cuts off just that, that little sliver there. But as you can see, like I said, these are gonna be some long skinny cards when I'm done. So I'm gonna finish trimming up this side of the deck and then we'll check back in. Okay, so we've got the both sides of the deck trimmed down. So you can see it is really skinny now. Let's just even take a look at it compared. So here was the original and now here is how much skinnier it is now that I've cut those borders off. So I've cut off a good probably um, half inch so far, yeah. So each of the borders looks like they're about a quarter of an inch. So I'm cutting roughly um, a half inch off the whole, the width of it. And I'll be cutting a half inch off the height of it as well by the time I'm done. So it's gonna get really small, which as I've, as I've mentioned, but sometimes it's kind of fun just to look and see and go, wow, that was a lot of border. Like when you look at it this way, that's a lot of space that's taken up that could have been used to expand that image a little bit, but you know, that's okay. Like I said, it's going to make it a bit smaller, which is generally easier for me to work with. Um, so at this point, I mean, I've got a fairly tight cut on both sides. It's fairly uniform, which I really like and why I'm using the measurements, even though it takes a bit longer. Um, you do kind of get a rhythm down, you get faster at it the more you do this. So at this point now, I need to cut the top and bottoms off. Look at the sides though. Oh, see, that just makes me happy. When I'm not seeing white, but I'm seeing all the color, that makes me happy. Um, so at this point, I think I'm going to um, go ahead and trim that bottom off and um, get that out of the way. I am, of course, going to keep the words, and again, always get my deck going in the direction that um, I'm cutting of the side that I'm cutting. That way I'm always making sure that I'm cutting the correct side at the correct measurements. Because if you flip it around, if I were to cut this one from the top at the measurements that I used in the bottom, it would be slightly different than the rest of the cards. Um, because you know, the measurements, the printing is never 100% exact. 
So at this point, what I'm going to do is move my washi, set this up about where I want it, which looks like it's going to be right here at the four and a half inch mark. It's always handy when I get nice, nice measurements like that. And I'm going to have to be really careful with this one because as you can see here, the text does run right to the bottom of the um, card. Now, if I cut into this a little bit and it seems more predominant on the majors because the text on the majors is bigger, um, if I do end up cutting into that a little bit, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world because the, the cards do have the titles or the numbers at the top, I mean, so I will be able to tell what card it is, even if I kind of cut into that, um, into those words a little bit, which I can promise you right now, I am, that is going to happen. Because I want to get that black border off, and you can see hopefully here, um, I mean, it's very, very slight, but I can see the little, uh, the little marks from the text. But again, like I said, because that's the way the text is, it's already going down below this white border. Um, there's just no way around it with this deck and the way that it was put together. And that's totally fine. I can still read this so it works for me, but um, that is something to keep in mind when you're trimming your decks. Um, when you're looking at the, the title areas, you know, you want to make sure that if you're trying to maintain those titles that you're double checking where your cuts are to make sure that you're not accidentally cropping into those. And with the minors, I didn't cut that one quite as close, but with the minors, the text is not as big. So it didn't, um, it didn't cut into the words at all. I'm going to try that and I cut just that little sliver off. Um, this is really like, the, I, like a sliver. Like, can you guys even see that? That's a sliver. That's what I just cut off. That's being really nitpicky. You definitely don't need to go to that extent for sure. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and finish trimming off the bottom um, border on these and then we'll check back in again uh, because to do this in real time it would be extremely boring for you guys. And it's a little bit more difficult for me to concentrate on what I'm doing when I'm trying to talk my way through a process. So that's why we're doing it this way. So I'm going to finish these up and then we'll check back in. So we've got the bottoms all trimmed off now. And you can see here, you can definitely see that text down there at the bottom where it's, you know, cropped up against it. But for the most part, if I flip them around the right way, you can still very much read what it says. And so that works for me. Um, so I think it's coming along really well. I just like, look at the colors. I just love that. I was sitting here thinking as I was trimming the bottoms that I originally was just going to do it in one solid color, but now I'm thinking because the, um, which I pointed out in my unboxing, the suits do have a slight different variations in colors. The wands have this red, the cups have this green, the swords have this yellow, um, the majors have this kind of orange color and the queens have this really deep yellow. So I might try to see if I can find markers that'll actually mimic those colors so that we can pull that in because I think, and then you look at the back, it has all those colors on it as well. I just think that might be really pretty on the sides, but that will really depend on whether or not I have the markers to do that. So before we can do that though, we need to finish trimming. So I'm going to line up my top here, try to get this so it looks looking like four and a quarter, which makes sense because I was at four and a half before. So like I said, cutting a quarter of an inch off um, all sides. And that does make for just really nice, making sure that I'm getting really nice, even straight cuts. And so there you go. It puts the number right directly at the top and there's our first card completely borderless. And that definitely makes me happy. And it's actually a really nice size. It's like the perfect size to fit in your hand. So we'll see when it's all said and done, but so far I am really liking the way it looks and I think it's going to look really great once we get it edged. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up trimming the tops off and um, I will probably go ahead and corner round it and then after I do all of that we'll check back in and see, um, see what the deck looks like and then pick our colors for our edges because that's always a fun part. Okay, I have finished up um, trimming 
and corner rounding this entire deck and look how cute it looks now. I ended up going with the small um, corner rounder because although I, I like the medium size, that tends to be my go-to, um, this is a very small deck now and I just thought that the medium uh, corners would probably be too big. You can see it here, this is close to the medium corner size. So if I had done the medium on here, I would have taken you know, quite, quite the chunk out of each of these cards, which would have been fine at the top two corners, but on some of the um, bottom ones, I would have gotten very close to the text. So I decided just to go with the smaller one, but look at it, look how cute that is. It's cute, it's little, um, it's all completely borderless now, so you get all that wonderful palette in there and it does still shuffle pretty well. Move all of my, um, it's wonderful when you trim a deck and it still, it still rifle shuffles because that is not always the case. Um, this one, however, the Make Playing Cards cardstock shuffles really well even when it's been trimmed. So now we come to the point of edging. And like I had mentioned earlier, um, I, I did have to turn the overhead lights on, so hopefully we're not going to get too bad of glare because it has gotten, gotten really gloomy and kind of rainy here, which means fall's coming, so I'm, I'm not complaining because I love that. But um, anyway, we do have this lovely color palette that we see down here in the bottom, and I thought maybe I would try to find um, some colors that might might match well with that and actually edge this deck in the different colors. So I have a set of... Um, distressed inks that we, I might use. I have a set of um, of my mild liners that I might use. And then I also found this pack of uh, multicultural colors in the Crayola. And you can see here that, now that I've got them out, we've got like some beautiful colors here that actually might work um, really well with this, this uh, particular deck. And I didn't necessarily buy these markers to go with this particular deck, but I think they might end up working out, working really well, because look at that. Um, short of the green, the green is the only one that might be missing, so I might have to pull a green in from a different, um, from a different source. But I thought we'll just have a little play here and kind of see uh, what these end up looking like. So I'm gonna pull one from each. So here's a wand, a sword, a queen, a major, and a cup, so one, two, three, four, five. I'll set these aside out of the way for a moment. And hopefully I am all in, in, in frame here. So basically what I'm gonna try to do is see if I can um, get a fairly close match to these colors down at the end, because I thought that might be cool and it might add that, um, that nice kind of gradient look that we have going on in the back of the cards. And really this is just, you know, playing. I could totally do one color. I could do the antique linen and just give it a nice age look. I could do a brown and just, um, you know, give it a nice age look. I could do a yellow, a, a rust color. Any of the those would work. Um, but I just thought it would be fun to to try and match the, um, the colors at the bottom because that just gives some interest to the uh, edges of the deck. And really, I mean, it's strictly just for fun. Like it's not not a requirement by any means. I have, I don't know if I've shown this before, I probably have, but this is my little box of um, edging. And I tend to edge, um, do samples of all the, the different um, inks that I have. So, and I keep them on, on hand so that I don't have to redo this every time I wanna sit down and go, do I want to, um, you know, use this particular color, how does it look on a card? So I have them, uh, the majority of them done already. Um, these are of course new, so I don't have those those done, but I thought we'd just kind of take a look and see how um, some of these have, have come come out, if I can find them. And it's actually getting quite, quite full. Um, so here is, like here's the rusty hinge. Um, so that, like that's almost a perfect match to the wands, I think. Um, but before we do that, because I kind of, I kind of want to use my new Crayolas, like a kid, right? I have new markers, I want to use them. So, but I think I'm probably going to have to use one of these two greens for the green. 
Um, I'm possibly uh, for the yellow maybe. So before we get into what I already have, um, I do wanna just do a couple of, of test cards in these ones so that I can see, these are gonna be in my way, so that I can see what um, how they're gonna look you know, in terms of being on the sides of a card. Now, I do have to say that, that these are different card stock than these, so the colors do vary slightly. The way that they bleed is also very slightly. But basically what I do is I usually take two to three cards. I think this time I'll just do two. And I pick a couple of the colors that I think might really work. Um, eventually I will do this whole, this whole palette here, but for right now I think I'll just pick a couple of the colors that I think might work and we'll give those a shot and see um, see how, how they blend in. Okay, so I have gone and basically um, made a marker mess. <laughs> I did end up edging all of the um, sample cards just because I had them out, so I thought, you know, might as well go ahead and do it. And um, I've pulled in some of the other colors that I think might work for this particular project. So I'll just show you a couple of the, um, I don't know if they'll show up on camera, probably not. Nope, they're not going to because I don't have like a huge selection of cards here. I have two um, and some of the ones that I did, you know, a long time ago, I have like a selection of three. And the reason that I do um, quite a few at once is just to allow me to be able to get a good chunk of color that I can see because just taking one card and trying to see that color can be really difficult. So I use the multiple cards. So I think what I'm gonna do now is just kind of have a play with them, um, compare the different colors to the colors on the bottom of the card and see which ones I think might end up working out for me. And then we'll go ahead and start edging. Okay, now that I've sort of cleaned up things, this is what I have um, come up with. So I'm gonna do the shabby shutters for the cups. And what I'm gonna do real quick is I have um, some of the pieces that I cut off. So I am just going to run my, um, my markers and pads and stuff along the edge and I'm going to run it along the cut edge because I am working with cut edges here now just to see um, how it's going to apply. Is it going to bleed really bad? Uh, generally, I tend to stay away from things that bleed, so usually I don't have a bleeding issue with my, um, with my materials, but the green went on really well. And then for the Crayola, so I went with the bronze Crayola for the wands. That went on really well, no bleeding. The tan Crayola for the swords. Whoops, wrote on it. Um, that's the other thing I like about Crayola, it wipes, wipes right off if I do get bleeding. Um, but the less I have to clean up, you know, the quicker this process goes. So that one worked just fine. I am doing my favorite mild liner yellow for the coins. And this one usually never bleeds. So that one's great. And the mahogany for the, um, for the majors, just to get that, that gorgeous, um, kind of, red bronzy pop of color in there, which is one of the things that I really like about this deck is the, the color palette. So I think this is gonna work really well. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to start working my way through um, the different suits in their related colors, and then we'll come back at the end and take a look and see how it all came together. Okay, so I have wrapped up edging the entire deck and I did it in all the different colors and I think it looks really cute. So I'm pretty happy with how it came out. So here is the wands, which were done in bronze. Maybe if I bring everything in, you can see it better. So here is the wands in the Crayola bronze. And then we have the swords, which is in the tan, the Crayola tan, which I think looks really good. Next, we have the coins, 
with my midliner yellow, which I really love. And the cups in the shabby chic. Gorgeous color there. And the majors are all in the mahogany, which look really great. So now let's put them all together. So let's gather them all up. So we have the wands, the swords, the cups. I definitely need to do some touch up on the swords there. The, what did I say? The coins, the cups, and the majors. So that, if I can zoom in here, is what the deck looks like when they're all put together. And you can see here that that um, color that I used, the tan color, I think it was, I think it was this one, definitely have still some spots that I need to touch up on the side there. Or what I could do is actually um, antique the deck. But look how cool you can kind of catch the, the colors. I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but I'm kind of catching the colors of the edging when I turn it sideways. Let's see how it goes here. Now you can see those colors pop in on the sides. That's just really, really neat. Got that red color, the brown, the yellow, the green. Very cool. So I could also um, take some distressed ink and I could distress the edges of these a bit just to make them, um, you know, add a little bit more of that texture to it. And I might go back and do that later on. The only reason that I'm positive, that I'm hesitant to do that is because with this darker red, it's not gonna show up really well. So that the antiquing um, with the distressed ink works a lot better with the lighter color cards than it does with the, um, with the darker cards. But, so I might go back and do that at some point, but look how cool. Let's go ahead and give them a shuffle, even though I might have to at some point um, re, Resort them in order to get them back into their suits for touch up, but it does shuffle beautifully. And now we're getting that nice mix of color and those little bit of imperfections, um, those little bit of imperfections that we saw um, when they were all clumped together aren't near as apparent once you start mixing them in together and they do shuffle beautifully. I've said many times I really do like um, make playing cards cardstock. It's a little difficult to overhand because they are so narrow. So overhand, yeah, might be better this way. Because with them being so narrow now, it's hard to kind of overhand them and keep them in line because they're not, they're just not sitting correctly in my hands to do that. But whoops, flipped one around. Flipped a couple of them around. Um, they do overhand really nicely. So now that we've got that mix in there, let's take a look. Look at that. That that looks cool. That makes me happy. So you can see here we get that nice mix. We've got that beautiful borderless look. Let's go this way with them. So you can see those the touches of the colors on the edges. Hopefully that's picking up on camera well enough that you can see it, but it looks really cool. And then, yeah, that is just a really great color match, I think, to the backs of the cards. It's kind of like it was made for it, and even to the front, so it works really well. So, overall, yeah, super happy with the way it came out. Um, I had made a bag for it, and because um, I think that the colors look really great. I did um, make this bag a little bit tight to this deck, so now it should have lots of room in here, which it does. It fits in there beautifully. So there's the bag. And let's just, before we wrap things up here, so here is our original size. So you can see, let's go this way, how much I actually cut off, basically an inch all the way around. 
was roughly what I ended up doing because I took a quarter of an inch off top and bottom and a quarter of an inch off each side. So yeah, big, big difference in terms of the size, but I actually really like um, this size. I think it's really a great size to work with and um, works really well in my hands. So that's another reason why I like to trim decks like these is because it makes them smaller, easier for me to work with. So there you have it. There is the, um, the Isadora Tarot, a Neo Victorian Tarot trimmed down to be borderless and edged in all of those beautiful vintage colors. So thank you for joining me for this mod with me of the Isidore Tarot. I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.